I have a copyright infringement litigation against Stars, Lionsgate, P Valley, Katori Hall. The short story is I went and met with them. I left them my script. And then all of a sudden I looked up and P Valley was there. All the I's were dotted, all the T's were crossed. Copyright was 2004. It's just one of those things that you have to um, prove. You've been very persistent. Yeah. And a lot, and I know people like will probably look at you like, why is she doing this? Like, this too much, yeah. all that. I'm sure you've heard all of oh, those of things. Of course, yeah. absolutely. And I get it. Like, people love the show and people think that I just kind of <laughs> yeah. pulled it out of the sky. And, and that's not it at all. In my previous situation with RB Divas, it was another thing that was very similar. Oh, we're going to create a show called Hollywood Divas and it's going to be five. One. You uh, understand what I'm saying? Right. Oh, no, you don't have anything to do with this. But then the producers who produce RB Divas got executive producer credit. But oh. they did, oh, yeah, it was that thing. My family's been in this battle. We're going into year three shortly. Right. I'm fighting because I believe that this will make people second guess any other time they consider taking something from a creative. I am Rashawn Ali, everybody's home girl, everybody's favorite soror, the cool soror, representing the ATL and the east side of the cater. What's happening? Five, four, three, two, three. Okay, here we go. It's the Cool Soror Podcast, hosted by me, Rashawn Ali. Let's go. Welcome to another edition of the Cool Sword Podcast. I'm your host, Rashawn Ali, and this is your opportunity to hear the stories of women in black Greek letter organizations. And also, we have the Cool Bros as well. But I am so very honored today. And I was like, I always want to interview her like on my like own, and I have in radio a couple of times. But Sis done became a member of Sigma Gamma Rho, and I was like, oh, we got to do a real <laughs> sit down now. Welcome to the show, Grammy Award winner, superstar producer, like creator, director. She does all things. Nikki Gilbert is Yay! here today. How are you? Look at her, throwing it up. Throwing it up. I am good. What's up? What's up, Rashawn? I'm here. You are here. You told me I was coming and I showed up. Right. I said that yes. when I saw you. First of all, <laughs> let's, you know, I usually talk about like the sorority thing at the end because I don't want, when people think about the Cool Store podcast, like, oh, they're going to be talking about sorority stuff the whole time. No, it really is just the thread yeah. that brings us all together, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I saw, online <laughs> that you and the members of your group became yes. honorary members of Sigma Gamma Rho. I was like, that's dope. Yeah. Can you like, before we get into Brownstone and all the things that you have going on, because you got a lot going on. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me about that call that you all got to be members of, of Sigma Gamma Rho? Can you tell me about that moment? Absolutely. So what's crazy is, okay, Kappa Sweetheart. Okay. In college. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. Huh? And listen, when I say, you know, they're like, oh, you got your little auxiliary. Oh, that's cute. No, listen. So all of the sorors who basically brushed us, if we want to call it that, right. were, you know, Deltas, AKAs. Right. Right. You know right, what right. I mean? So they're like, oh, no, we're going we gonna to do this. Right. So we was on that little line for about six Come weeks. Come on, Capital you know what I'm saying? We was in there. We was, we was putting in the work. Putting right? in the work. Right. So I do feel like I put in a little bit of the work. Right. 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 And I just never really thought about it beyond that. It was mm -hmm. just like, this is cool. Made lifelong friends. Um, my sister, Robin Terry, who's actually your soror. Yeah. Robin Terry, who runs Motown. Yes. In Detroit, right? She's a cap sweetheart as well. And we just kind of like was lifelong friendships and that was enough. So I got a call from someone saying that they're looking for influencers to just congratulate Sigma Gamma Rho on the centennial. And I was yeah. just like, of course, why not? Yeah. So I did a little video, whatnot, and I made a little comment. In jest, you know, just joking. Right. I'm like, well, I ain't no Sora, but can I come party with y'all? And the next thing you know, uh, Sora Brown, Deborah Brown called. Yes. And she emailed me. And she's like, the response to your video, just kind of supporting the organization. We've kind of watched some of the work you've done in the community. Would you consider it? And I was the first like, but I'm like 52. I, is it going to be legitimate? Right. Are people going to be like, no, you ain't really a Sora. Right. And I had conversations with my family and I did some research and I found out Oh my gosh. So I mean, Listen. I love SG Row. I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be completely like, honest. What? Yeah. It's one of my I mean, I love all four of us, but I love the work that you all do. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Um I'm truly enamored of it. Um, oh, from the swim, amazing. 1922, just Absolutely. and and from the founder. I, I, listen, I know my history on all of us. Yes, but from the founders being teachers at Educated. Butler at a, at, at a at a predominantly white institution, founding this organization, 
absolutely incredible. Absolutely. You see, you see, I know, right? Listen, L- baby, listen. yes. I said swim night because you were obviously I'm a, a swimmer, swimmer, right? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I thought that was amazing. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm just blessed. And and when they asked if I would consider approaching the other members of the group, and we would make history as the first girl group ever in Divine Nine. Yes. Like, what? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. That is we so here. amazing. Yes. I love it, and it's so yes. funny. I just had um, your national president, Rashida Liberty, oh my on God. the show Ooh, as well, baby. talking about the partnership yeah. between the American Red Cross and yes. the National Panhellenic Council because she serves as the chair yes. of the um, President's Council. So just yes. had her on, and she is absolutely phenomenal. What? Right. Yeah. So like, I'm, when I tell you. Yeah. I'm entrenched in this Greek life, like all across the board, it. not just Alpha Kappa Alpha because I'm a member, but across the board yeah. because we do such incredible work. So welcome Absolutely. to Greek life. Thank you. I love it. Thank and you, you have embraced it. it. Love because it every, I'm so Neo, honey. This honey, you are Neo. How many train. pieces of nail you do you have? Listen, girl, listen. every time we go do a show, I got this this weekend. Listen. Listen. They are... And listen. I like the gifts. Thank you, you so much. Listen, and Auntie Shani got something for you at the end of the show. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, this is that neo life. Right. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love Riding it. I to love the wheels it. fall off, baby. I love, I love it. it. And as you should. And I'm so glad you're representing yes. in the way that you do. Oh, because a lot of people, when they become honorary members or members in general, yes. they just be like, oh, okay, whatever. Yeah. But you are definitely no, it embracing came at it all. the best possible time in my life. Yeah. It just, you know, when you... When you get acknowledged for for doing the work by an organization that really actually does the work they and they do. say, hey, let's do this work together. Yeah. It is just a whole different thing. It's a beautiful thing. Like you thing. feel like you found your tribe. Yeah. And I feel like Divine Nine is definitely my tribe. And yeah. Sigma Gamma Rose Sorority Incorporated. Come on, you better get into it. I love it. Yeah, greater women, That's baby. Gorgeous. I love That's it. gorgeous. Let's go all. Let's go all the way back. Let's go all the way back now. Not yes. to 1922, yes. but come on. When you know, th- this moment with this beautiful mm-hmm. voice and everything collides and you have this group, you have Brownstone and then you guys get discovered and all of these gorgeous things. Take me all the way back there because oh, wow. people mm-hmm. know Nikki from, you know, obviously from what you've done in the past. But like, mm-hmm. I want to get into the I want to get into the root of how you yeah. even got into this whole thing. Yeah, um, I would have to say my mother, may she rest in peace. Um, she was the first multi hyphenate career woman. Now we got a word to it, yeah, right? You know, yeah. what you decide what you're going to do and just do that, right? Right. right. Um, my mother was a singer, a jazz singer. My mother was um, had a builder's license very early on in her life. Wow. My mother flipped houses in Detroit before it was popular. What? Oh, no, she was, Helen Gilbert was a bad. Yeah. yeah. And um, I just know that she was a woman who um, instilled in us pursue your dreams and your goals, right? She was born in uh, Belleville, Sumter, Michigan. And they literally helped my grandfather build the house, right? Wow. And it was just like, you need a factory job. You need to go to school and get... My mother was like, no, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to pursue my dreams. Early. I'm pursue very, very early on. And it's interesting because I remember like... You know, no shade to any of my aunts or anything. But, you know, we, we had this structure in our community where it was go to school, get a, a good job at a factory, especially mm-hmm. Michigan and Detroit was a factory town, right? So most of my relatives work for Ford. My mom always um, encouraged us to pursue our dreams and our goals. Now, she wasn't quite ready for when I told her that I was going to leave college and I had a full ride to EMU to go and pursue my dreams after seeing Dead Poet Society. To See, that's what it was. What? It was a movie. It was the movie Dead Poet Society. That's... Seize the day. Carpe diem. Do it while you're young. Go for it. While you're watching the movie, you say, I'm about to do that. <laughs> Actually, it was Dwayne, my my, my um, brother, mm-hmm. who uh, from, from high school to college, we like this. And he said, I saw this movie. You got to see it. Mm-hmm. Carpe diem. Seize the day. Do it while you're young. Mm-hmm. We were theater majors. We we're like, you know what? Let's go to California. Let's pursue it. Let's just do it. Had never been on a plane in my life. What? Had never been on a plane in my life. My cousin was like, who's an AKA, by the way? Oh. You about to drop out of school and try to be famous? Oh, Lord, we'll see you back in six months. And that stayed with me. It, it gave you a... Enti- it, what? It, the it, wind it drove my you. wings, baby. I was like, Stephanie is not going... Because... And, and I get it. You know, she went to college. You know what I mean? She it was did, like, no, you're going to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, and one day, you know, just kind of pursuing, I put together... I put an ad in a paper called Drama Log, Right. And um, I was like, you know what? I had insecurities. I, I didn't think that I could do it by myself. I was like, you know what? But harmonies and blends and vocals. So I put together uh, this group. I had auditions, uh, Maxie and Mimi, and there were five of us initially. And then we just kind of started writing music and practicing and whatnot. And one day we got stranded in the desert, right? Maxie, we walked down the street in Melrose. This guy says, you're beautiful. I'm doing a video, you know? And he's like, my parents are financing it. Now, you know, it wasn't. Right. 
Gotcha. Um, doing this video. Because somebody video. was financing yeah, yeah, it. Right, right, I'm sorry. Right, right, no, right. no shade. Parents here. financing? We're growing. We're growing. Video? We're growing, black people. Not hey, a video. Not, we said college. No. We said a video. Fi- financing the a, video. A video. A music oh, no. video. No, no, so no. we go and um, the car breaks down. We get stranded. The, you know, I stick around with the younger guy. And then to make up for it, they're like, we're going to set up a meeting with you with some publishers. We went to this meeting. The publisher said no. Barry Kolsky was leading us out the door. And two women, which we talk about allies that don't necessarily look like us. Yeah. Marla McNally and Linda Blum was like, what was that we heard up there? Me from Detroit. Some songs I wrote. <laughs> um, we're a group. Sing them for me. She set up a meeting with Jerry Greenberg, and the rest is history. We got a record deal with Michael Jackson. It didn't happen that fast, but that, um, but that is how it happened. It was just about perseverance and opportunity and preparation meeting. Yeah. So from that moment on, those values I got from my mom, hustle, grind, show up, be ready, you know, is what led to, to this deal. Right. Yeah. What and was then, Michael like? Well, okay, so here's the thing. We didn't kick it like that. Now, we did go to the house in Encino for a holiday party. Okay. And we did meet um, at the the Jack the Rapper events that they used to have. Yeah. But the beautiful thing about being signed to Michael was he was so busy being superstar Michael Jackson. After he gave us a record deal and heard us perform, he said, go on our head and write that record. We, they sent us to New York, and we recorded our album, and we weren't— um, they didn't interfere with the creative process, which was amazing, which is why on the first and second album, I had so many uh, co-writing credits, yeah. which is like maybe 80% of the records, because we weren't put in a situation. And I'll never forget, he said to me, um, and it's funny, it's like right before we took this picture that's kind of all over the internet, I'm like, you know, it's really intimidating to be signed to the greatest entertainer of all times. And he's like, I signed you because you were great. Mm. Go and be great. Don't operate from fear. Operate from the place that we chose you because you're great. And that just kind of was all the validation I needed. Right. To do you going. carry that with you? That Oh, my God, everywhere. Yeah. Every, I mean, how, how do you not receive something from uh, arguably the greatest entertainer that all ever lived? Time. Right. Right? Yeah. Um, that is just divine intervention. And you just have to kind of live in that moment. So every time I have a moment of, ah. Uh, I think, but Michael chose me, so mm. what am I tripping off of? Yeah. Michael chose me, us. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. During that time, I mean, obviously you had highs and lows, that's life. Absolutely, lots. What was the greatest, I don't want to say takeaway, but if I had to give it a word, it probably would be that, from those years in that group setting. <laughs> Look at that smile. You know, What's really interesting is people would assume that because we were a girl group, Mm -hmm. we had a lot of tension and beef and stuff. And that's not, that wasn't really the case, Rashawn. Like, there were a couple moments, like, I can identify one or two moments where it was just like, you know what I mean? But for the most part, I think we were so excited about being successful. I mean, you know, we on the cover of Jet Magazine and the grocery store and the D. What you talking about? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and we were also groomed and developed to understand that you don't, um, we had one situation where we kind of had a little bit of moment and took that tension into an interview. Mm. And Jerry hit us immediately like, yeah, I heard you guys had a little bit of a lackluster interview because of some tension that happened before. Think of yourselves as Coca-Cola. Always operate. And this was before brands and the importance of that. So the artist development didn't really allow us to to lay or lean into the drama. Now, obviously, you know, you got the who's the lead singer and who's, you know what I mean? Right. You have those moments. But I'm genuinely um, a person who wants to see everybody win. Yeah. Like, I really want us all to succeed. Um, so I never really allowed it to, you know, and it sounds like, oh, I never took it personally. But I didn't because I understood how blessed and fortunate we were to be traveling the world and and, and using our gifts and, and being successful. And I'm like, the alternative is not something I want to see. Right. So let me keep it together. Because the alternative was... What, Being back home in Detroit, ex- ex- in the factory, uh, in the factory, yeah, and that was or in not- the hair salon, and and, and no, and no, she, no, she, you have we know, I get all. it, yes, you understand, you're yeah. in the dig, but I think <laughs> God gives us all gifts. Everybody has this thing that makes them magical, and we have to you discover it. And I look at myself and our group. You know, Maxie's from South America. Mm-hmm. Mimi's from LA. You know, her father was vice chancellor of, of, at UCLA, right? So. For God to put us into that room, I knew that I was just operating in a place where I had to, you know, I was a little businesswoman at 23, 24. I didn't know it, but I was like, "Uh uh-uh, we here to do what we got to do and not play games. That's it. When you look at some of today's artists, Mm. 
because you came from a time where you actually were developed. I mean, yes. you had the obviously yeah. the God given gift, but a- artists were developed yeah. back in the day. Yeah. When you look at what's going on in music now, what are your thoughts on what you see, especially when it comes to singers? You know, because mm-hmm. I could actually get a deal right now, and I can't even sing. But I'm you sure cute. could. But you I get really, in the studio, yeah. and I'm yeah. new. Yeah, yeah. 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 Demo with y'all. <laughs> Hit that alto, baby. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, feel me? Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what do you feel about it? I mean, do you? I mean, do you have thoughts about how music is going and R and B and 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 where we are? You know, I do. And what's really interesting is like every 25 years, right? Just like with fashion, we mm-hmm. go through this phase of because when we came along, you know, there were a lot of, you know, sort of that we were coming out of that 80s moment where okay. it wasn't so much about. Ah, you know, it was a couple of big rocks, you know what I mean? But it really got into like, let's be cute. Let's, you know what right. I mean? So there was a moment of that as well, right? So there's always a place in music where it is just less about talent and mm-hmm. more about the gimmick and more about the show, right? Um, I think what has happened now, and it's really unfortunate, um, I think what has happened now is that we've become so consumed with numbers, right? Numbers. we become so consumed followers. with numbers and followers. Yeah. And we become consumed with, 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 um, Everything but the gift, everything but the talent, right? And it's scary because what happens is music has always been the soundtrack of our lives, right? Art has always helped uh, develop and define our culture. And now what's happening is you have a bunch of kids at the wheel, right? Not just the talent, but at the executive level, which is super dangerous, Mm -hmm. right? I think we, we, we gloss over the fact that, you know, there are people who are making the decisions to sign these what do you call them, drill rappers, and to sign these these women who are like, I'm just going to show my you-know-what, mm-hmm. and, and that's all. You know what I mean? And I think when we start to allow the industry to become that, it becomes a very dangerous place because we impact every aspect of our community yes. based on that art. You know, it's a very serious thing. People, oh, just entertainment, it's just entertainment. No, 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 no. It defines our culture. A lot of times it dictates what we wear, you know, what we see, what we eat. You know what I'm saying? It's a very power, what we say, what we believe about each other and what people believe about us. Right? Damn. We could look to Motown 25. You remember? Oh, I it would did. Be like, Ooh, oh, sitting in front of a front I mean, TV literally, like literally. You know what I'm saying? I recorded it on the VCR. Yeah, yeah on the VCR. On the VCR. Yeah. That's it. And played it back That's so it. many times. That show? Yep. Because we were beautiful and we were poised and we were talented and we were, you know, and it was a representation. We were like, wow, look at Diana. Right. Now it's just I see these award shows and I say, wow, we have really just become, we've allowed the children to run the village. Mm. Mm. And it's just a dangerous place. Wow. Yeah. And how do you find your place musically in this place? It's been a journey because, you know, I'm one who's just like, oh, that's what's going on? Okay, I'm out. Norma Desmond, honey. I'm, bye. You know? Um, I, I kind of pulled back, and I wasn't as interested. Um, I felt betrayed by an industry that I loved so much. I felt like there was no place for real authenticity and real talent and gifts, and I stepped out of it. And I struggled a lot to get back to my gift. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I realized that you can't speak negatively about something, and you can't talk about how much something needs to change if you're not willing to roll up your sleeves and get oh. involved in the process right. of changing it. So I felt like in order to do my part to, to remind people of what it means to have talent, then I have to immerse myself in this space. Like, yeah. I have to not think about, you know, what people might say because, you know, here I am 25 years later now getting back involved in the music. I have to know that there's a place for me. There's a place for people who appreciate what I do. Absolutely. And I have to operate from there. Yeah. Right? And then as that evolves into something and people pay more attention to it, then I'm now contributing to um, redefining what it means to be an artist mm-hmm. as opposed to complaining about the sh- Stuff. You could do it. You could, you could okay. curse on this show. It's yeah. fine. Complain about shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like right. you can't be the armchair quarterback. You got, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. got to roll up your sleeves and get in there and do it. Absolutely. And God gave me this gift. And I truly believe if you don't operate from that place, that it was Shirley Ralph. I will Honey, never forget. She is, Baby, all, auntie, listen, talk let about, me tell you what. Listen. She's going to be on this show. She said, she's you better. Be she is, absolutely. She is. And she's going to give such good words. She I'm said just going to sit me, here and be like, hey, that's it. hello. And, and right. let her talk. Let us talk. Let yeah. her go. Um, she said, you, 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 you use it or you lose it. Mm. And I was just like, and she said, no, you don't understand. You use, use it, it 
or you, you lose, lose it. it. And I was like, okay, auntie, I get it. And now it resonates with me more than ever. And I think that's the thing. Like, we got so many wealthy, um, super influential young people who have not had enough Cheryl Lee Ralphs and Jerry Greenbergs and Michael Jacksons in their lives. Mm -hmm. And they think they control this thing. And the fact is that we're learning the hard way. That we do not. That's it. We do not control it. And you have continued to control, like, everything that you have done. Like, you stepped into television mm. with creating R&B Divas yes. and so many other things. Yes. What was the—why did you—like, you, you come from music. Mm -hmm. Was television and creating and, and, and doing all those things, was that always something you wanted to do? Was Absolutely. That, I wanted okay. to be an actress before I wanted to be a singer, oh, baby. Oh, that's good. Nobody no, I wanted to be—oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to be an actress. Okay. Actress. Actress. Yes. Um, and then my parents both did music, so okay. it was just kind of like, it's done. Right. We've done that. Uh, so, yeah, I, I I saw, in the case of R&B Divas, I saw what I thought was a void, right? Um, it, Housewives was out there, but I was like, where's the story that tells, where's the show that tells the story of women who have struggled to rebuild their careers? Where's the story that, where's the show that, that gives us an opportunity to rebuild our careers, right? So I reached out to Selena and Faith and Monifa, and they were actually a part of a play that I wrote called Soul Kittens Cabaret, which was inspired by my work with Tyler Perry. Because I did Meet the Browns with Tyler Perry. Yes. And I'll never forget, this is that little entrepreneur in me. I'll never forget Lucia Ash, who I absolutely adore. She's one of my partners. She's walking down the hall, and I'm like, she's coming out. She's like, we did it. Sold out the entire venue. And I'm not going to repeat the numbers, but they made a whole lot of money. And I was like, did you say? Right. And she was like, mm hmm And I was like, see, I'm doing the wrong. I ain't supposed to be behind the, I ain't supposed to be on right. the stage. I'm not, supposed to be, right? You know, so that was the first, exactly. A, right, a, yeah. a piece and of that was the Yeah, that was it. That was the first sort of like, let me finish writing this show. I wrote Soul Kittens Cabaret. I, I put it up in Detroit. Uh, Selena, Monifa, all these women participated in it. And from that, R&B Divas was born. Wow. And it did great. Yes, it did. It was the, um, I think I can say this, uh, the head of programming at the time, you know, kind of said to me on the side um, that, you know, this show is largely responsible for the, 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 the success of the network because there was a moment where they were questioning what was going to go down with it. You know yeah. what I mean? And when R&B Divas came along and we all made a contribution, everybody contributed, I believe, equally in that success Absolutely. of that show. Um, and it became so hugely successful. And people often wonder, well, if it was so successful, then why'd you move happened? away from it? I made a promise to God privately, right? Um, and I'll never forget walking up the hill in the in the community. And I was like, listen, if it starts to become what so many of these other shows often become, then I'm going to step down from it. Lord, I promise you that. Yeah. And I was struggling with the promise that I made to God and what this could have potentially meant for my career, and I just ultimately had to make the decision to move away from it because I think it became something different. It did. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because there were so many great relationships. Um, and I'm confident that at some point, you know, we'll all get to a place of, of really seeing it. Yeah. It's, it so are some of the, I know, you know, a lot of those relationships, you know, um, because of the show, mm -hmm. things happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, are, are, are you... Good with people now? Absolutely. Or? You know, it's really interesting because what's crazy is the biggest, most obvious um, conflict on the show was between Selena and I, yes, right? Yes, yes. And people don't realize, listen, when I say, you know, people don't know. When she came to Atlanta, I was like, look, girl, we, she pumping, you know, mm -hmm. pumping her breast because she just had the baby, you know, right, freezing right. the milk. Sitting, you know what I mean? It was like she, we were like so like this, looking mm -hmm. for properties together. I'm like, girl, y'all can live with me. And I think what happened is... It was new for all of us, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was very new for all of us. And I think um, Angie says it best. There, When you have people who are in your ear and their motivation is making sure that we captivate viewers and we make create a compelling show, we didn't know how the manipulation could occur, right? right? We right, didn't know right. how easy it was to say this or that. And I think that we got to a place where um, we just didn't know how to navigate how to how to respond to each other. We'd always yeah. promise one another that we would keep it real and say what we had to say. And as far as Selena and I, I've, me and all the women on the show, I think, first of all, the beef is squashed. Right. There's no, I have no ill will. Right. I don't think anybody, I don't think any of us wish ill will to one another. I think we're all just still trying to figure out 
how we recover Man. and repair the relationship. Yeah. Because, you know, it's very hurtful for all of us. Absolutely. I think we all have a legitimate reason to feel like, but sis, you know what I'm but saying? why did it have to? But yeah, why did it have yeah, to? And, you know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. I also believe that there are no L's. They're just lessons. Mm-hmm. Right? And and I'm excited about having the opportunity for us to come together and really work through now, it. That would be a reunion. Yeah. I'm that very excited beautiful. about that. And I've reached out to everybody to try to do it. And I understand we, you know, folks are busy. People got stuff going on. Right. Everybody, and, everybody and, do a big thing. Right. And, and people have moved on. Yeah, people have you moved know, on. In their Absolutely. own way. Absolutely. Yeah, you know. But I think it's important for that healing to happen. Not for us, but for the people who were supporters and fans of the show. Yeah. For young, you know, girls out there who may, or, or even people, grown women, who haven't spoken to their girlfriends in a long time for something right. real trivial on Caddy. Yeah. Right? I think that is the reason why we publicly mend those fences that right even if it just kind of continues the way it is in terms of how we connect but like uh, instagram live would be great something. you know something yeah. would be fantastic yeah, yeah 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 we get I'm, i mean people ask all the time yeah and i honestly and you know people say oh i don't have no problem i have no rashawn i'm looking at you i love every last one of those women yeah i understand that there were a lot of other um things at play and the thing that i'm most frustrated about is that they got what they wanted mm. Those people who, you know, I, I remember I got an email I wasn't supposed to get. Right? Oh, gosh. It was it wasn't one, no, I was to, supposed to get it. Right. I was, it was supposed it, to get it. It was about you, but then somebody put you in the two. Some, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what happened was someone forwarded me okay. a response without, I don't know whether she knew or not, but, you know, and then in the body of the email was still there. And it said, we don't want Nikki and Selena to be friends for a lot of reasons right now. So we, we got an opportunity to do Yanla very early on. Oh. They said, we want to pass on this opportunity. Uh, the, the person who was pitching us for it said, this would be a great opportunity for, for Nikki and Selena in particular to mend, you know, their, and this was before the second season, yeah. right? And the email basically was like, this is, in essence, a reunion. We don't want Nikki and Selena to be friends and mend their stuff on. And it was it was crazy. And I said, okay, I see what we're in, in competition with, oh which is a large, God. which is a big part of why I left. Because I understood that I couldn't compete with um, people who had the power and the control over the narrative. Ooh. And I didn't know that I, I needed to have ownership in order to have that. I created the show. You know, the, nobody's going to debate. I cast the show. You know what I mean? But I, it was my first time being a, a creator and you know, they didn't and, give and me the Shonda those Rhimes types of treatment. They get, oh, yeah, man. And they were like, yeah, I know. And, it, yeah, it was, yeah. And you have continued to deal with politics. Yes, with, of course. Um, you know, your current situation, oh, which yeah. is very well publicized. Yeah. Um, with you really fighting for what you created mm-hmm. and what seemingly has been replicated in the yeah. hit show, yeah. P-Valley. Yes. Um, for those who may not be familiar mm-hmm. with this fight, yeah. can you give us what you can give us? I yeah. know because there are all, you know, legal it proceedings and all that. And yeah. I know your lawyer has said, hey, you yeah. going on Rashawn's show, don't be saying too much. Because, <laughs> you know, Rashawn like to talk to the people. That's she your gonna... server. My lawyer, one of my lawyers is your server. Really? Tanisha. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so what can you tell us about where you are in this and why you continue to fight for yes. it? Yes. Um... So where we are now is um it's been ongoing obviously for some time. I, I actually talked to, to to you and Frank very early on in this process. Um, so I have a copyright infringement litigation um, against uh, Stars, Lionsgate, P Valley, Katori Hall. Um, the short story is I went and met with them. I left them my script, and then all of a sudden I looked up and P Valley was there. Right. So all the I's were dotted, all the T's were crossed. Copyright was 2004. It's just one of those things that you have to um, prove. Um, and where we are in the court case now is that Stars, Lionsgate, and Katori have said that they don't see similarities. They don't think they're anything alike. Um, and they have asked the judge to either dismiss it, which is a public document, or they have asked the judge to move it to Los Angeles because it would be more convenient for them in Los Angeles. And they've asked for a few people to be taken off of the case, right? Hmm. Um, so my lawyers have obviously responded to that motion. We've been waiting um, patiently. Okay, that's a lie. <laughs> I've been going crazy <laughs> waiting for this judge, but we're waiting for the judge to decide whether or not he sees that this thing should proceed and move forward in court. Um, it has been a process. I don't want anybody to believe that it's something that's easy. 
right? Um, because I am so faithful and because I am so um, optimistic and I know that at the end of the day, um, I am telling the truth. Yeah, because um, you have, uh, listen, you've been very persistent. Yeah. And a lot, and I know people like, will probably look at you like, why is she doing something like this too much? Yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard all of those things. Oh, of things. course. Yeah. Absolutely. And I get it. Like, people love the show and people think that I, I just kind of yeah. pulled it out of the sky. And, and that's not it at all. Um, I have been the victim, in my opinion, of people deciding that they're just going to take my intellectual properties. Generally speaking, of course, I, I'm not saying this specifically about them. Of course, we're going to wait to see what the judge has to say. But in my previous situation with R&B Divas, it was another thing that was very similar. Oh, we're going to create a show called Hollywood Divas, and it's going to be five. One. You uh, understand what I'm saying? Right. Oh, no, you don't have anything to do with this. But then the producers who produce R&B Divas got executive producer credit. But oh. they did well. Oh, yeah, it was that thing. Um, and then this has happened to me before. I won't go into it because that is still something that we're pursuing. And it's just a point right now where you have to stand up for yourself, not just for yourself. You have to stand up for other creatives because it's just happened over and over again. When we think about good times, you know what I mean? When we think about you, you hear about the Matrix, you know, and I don't know what those where those cases ended up. But as people of color, historically, when we discover that, you know, somebody else built the railroad or somebody else created blood, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, why does this keep happening to us? And, and largely because the fight, what is required to fight major corporations is so ridiculously overwhelming financially, mentally, emotionally. My family's been in this battle. We're going into year three shortly. Right. Right? Right. And um, I'm fighting because I believe that this will set precedents. I believe that this will make people second guess um, any other time they consider taking something from a creative. Um, this show has made a ton, allegedly. It's a hugely successful show. It is. Um, it's been described as executive producers as a monster, right? A monster hit. Yeah. Let's sit down in, in front of a judge and a jury. Let them look at my evidence and my facts. Let them hear your evidence and your facts. And let's determine who is the rightful owner of this intellectual property. That's it. Right. It's that simple. I don't wish any ill will to anybody, right? I'm... I'm frustrated and I'm angry that I have to be in this place again, but I'm a fighter because I was raised by Helen Gilbert. Um, I remember my aunt taking on, she was human resources. And I remember her taking on, you know, I don't know if I should have said that, but I remember her going through something with them. Mm -hmm. And I remember her coming to my house with my mom and just breaking down and wanting to quit. And I remember my mother telling her, no, sister, you have to fight this. You have to. And ultimately, she prevailed. And I go back to those moments where I see people that I love and people I've seen from fight. a distance fight. And that's what's so important. Like, this isn't about tearing down another black woman. I promise you on everything. I tried to resolve this peacefully. You did. Amicably. Oh, my goodness. Rashawn, yes. So you I reached out peacefully prior to. Rashawn. But, we, but you got the, nothing. You don't, what people don't understand is that you don't just, with a, with, a, with a litigation of this magnitude, as high profile as this is, you don't just, I'm suing y'all tomorrow. That's not how it goes. It's, it's a very taxing situation. I reached out. I'm like, and, and, and it was very like, hey, hey, I see some, some you know, hey, this is what I did. I know you received it, blah, 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 blah. You tried to be. Here's the paper trail. Here go the copyright. Here go the everything. And I think. Crickets. Well. Somewhat. You can't say that. Got you. No worries. We'll move on. Yeah. Okay. So we're just, and, and, and the thing is, I just want people to understand that it isn't about me trying to hit a lick. What it is about is encouraging or, or doing my part to encourage more equity, more more uh, fairness, more equality. Now we hear a lot more artists coming out being transparent about some of the things that have happened with them. Yeah. And that this is my small contribution to standing up for equality and standing up for our rights and standing up for, you know, the things that we create. We know media makes a whole lot of money. Why are we always on the losing end of it? Why do we always have to be hired? Why can't we be owners? Right. Mm -hmm. And for me, I learned from Tyler Perry. Ownership is what makes all the difference Listen, in the world. Tyler period. Perry has changed my life. That's it. He That's changed it. my whole life. That's it. He is a brilliant. Ownership means everything. My life. That's it. Yeah. And imagine if more of us had the opportunity to live in that space 
Imagine if more of us had control over our narratives and ownership over the things that we create, how many more jobs we could create, how many more opportunities. I look at R&B Divas and what it created with those franchises, and I think, wow, that's like 45. I mean, you know what I mean? It's crazy. And it it could have... Long, today still like, all today, today it could have been a new season do you know what tomorrow. I'm saying? Do you understand? So that for me was just the breaking point. It's just like, no, I'm not going, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not just going, no, nah, no, nah, we're going to fight if that's what we have to do. Now, I would love to live in a perfect world where people just sat down and did business. We sit at a table just like this and figure it all out. But because that is not how it works, because not enough of us go all the way. Mm. Right? And until more of us go all the way, go all the way, right? I may not see it in my lifetime, but I want some young girl who feels like she went into corporate America and came up with some genius concept that someone took from her to know that she can fight for it. And win. And win. Oh, because we going to win. Love it. And when we do, we are going to put every resource we possibly can into giving more people ownership opportunities and more equitable opportunities because it just helps the whole community win, period. We have to have more owners. We have to have more people who control their brands, their podcasts, yes, their things. Their things, yes. Especially when you create it. Right. Right. God gave me this idea. That's it. Download. I remember right. where I was. You feel me? Yes. And it's brilliant. Thank you. And imagine somebody coming in and call, we gonna call it school soror. <laughs> And we go have baby no. Mm-mm. The world is built on brands. You can't just go in and take somebody's brand from underneath them and then look at them sideways when, when they, they try to challenge you. What's next for Nikki? Um, outside what, what, of, after, after outside of winning. This okay. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> Um, outside of winning, we're really excited about the fact that, you know, Brownstone has released a new single after 25 I years. I love it. Absolutely. Yes. Um, that was a struggle for me because, you know, most people know my sister, Maxie. Yes. Um, I never want to question God, but I just felt like that I did, was that too was, soon. That just, that was, it just, you I didn't know, get it just, that I not, yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't, and all of that is, I mean, what's interesting is that, what's not interesting, what's really sad is that she literally um, died literally one week before my arbitration with uh, the r Divas thing. So that never really fully settled itself because I became a basket case at that point. Like, I don't right. even know what happened there. Right? So, that yeah. Was, yeah, it, okay. yeah. We're not going to get into that. No, but it, it, was, it, was, it was... As a it fan, was, I was like, yeah, huh? It was, yeah, as a sister. Right. You know, I, can, I can't even imagine that I what you And felt. I deal with it. Yeah, it's just... So it was very hard for me to even imagine the possibility of Brownstone without her. Yeah. Because that is my... That wasn't just my group member. She was my yes. best friend and my sister. Like, we talked every, every single day. Wow. So that was um, very difficult for me. But then I had to, again, take myself out of it and understand. You've been through a lot. Girl, yes. Lost my parents 90 days apart. Honey, Lord, yes. What it do you do to, to, to stay centered? And I'm not saying this because the man is here. Um, but I just thank God that I have a husband who, you know, he's military quiet. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, but he's but so an good intellectual. Looking too. Yeah, look at, you're right. look at, what's up, buddy? Hey, hey, baby. <laughs> Um, but I thank God yeah. for my rock, right? And and I've always been a family person. When I moved to California, I moved all my cousins with me. I moved, you know what I'm saying? You're that person. I'm, I'm that person. Yeah. Like, y'all get out of Detroit. There ain't nothing there. Come on, go right. to hell. I got you. You know what I mean? So I thank God that I've been surrounded by people um, who love me and are, are real with me and protect me and have my back. But the other part of it is I, um, really it is me understanding that this is a lesson and not a loss. Mm. There is something that God, for whatever reason, feels like you're a big girl, literally. You, you can handle it. And I don't not have my moments of just completely breaking down and letting it out. Um, I, this, my, this fitness routine that I've, I've adapted, you know, um, it has been tremendous, right? My husband's like, yo, let's hit the pads. I'm like, hit the pads? What you talking about? That's boys to find about it. You know what I mean? But that boxing, baby, that pad work, baby, that, that jungle get you right. It's like, I ain't got the, I ain't got the energy to cry. Because I'm just like, you know, so just really physically exerting myself. and it. seeing You understand? I yes, you know, I do. And shifting my focus from the trauma to the possibilities, right? Oh, that's good. Um, because when I think about it, I, I think about my aunt, right? I think about my aunt. And I think about the fact that she lost three of her children in a fire when they were very young. Oh, my God. And my cousin Stephanie was the remaining child, and she was burned over 90% of her body. What? 
So I think about people who have suffered losses that I believe are far more tragic and how they've been able to suck it up and, and, and deal with live. it and move on and, and keep living. You lose your babies like that, I don't even understand. I, like, I don't even know. what. So I always think about um, when, I, when I start feeling sorry for myself, when I start feeling like, I've been through so much and they always taking my stuff. And they, I'm like, but you're here. You've been blessed. You got opportunity. To, you live to fight another day, right? Um, and I just thank God for giving me that. Does it hurt? Does it frustrate the hell out of me sometimes? I'm like, what the hell? Y'all see, look, sometimes I got to just, and that's the other thing, Rashawn. I'm vocal about it, right? I think that we we get to a place where we feel sometimes like we have to like be pulled up and it's all, no, I'm fine. Everything's good and everything. No, 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 no. It's not. It hurts. This shit is awful. Yeah. It's terrible. But we're still here. And how can we take what we believe is, is, a, is a bad situation and really try to figure out how to turn it into something more positive? And God, all oh, every single time he comes through. When I lost Maxie, my daughter was pregnant with my grandson, who Ooh. is the light of, your of life. my life. Like, he is just... Baby, he laid his clothes out last night. What? He went to bed. We didn't have to tell him to go to bed. He laid his clothes out. He was ready. He said, I got to wear an orange shirt to school tomorrow because we're doing orange shirt. He laid them out just like... With, and put himself in the bed, put his little humidifier on and everything. And I said, you know what? This right here. I know I lost Maxie. That's Maxie, baby. You understand what I'm saying? I do. So I tricked myself into believing... That, that these little gifts and these little nuggets um, are reasons to not feel sad about it. Mm-hmm. You know, to, 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 and, and it's life, Rashawn. We, we, we're not all going to live. None of us is going to get out of here. Alive. <laughs> uh, alive. We're all going to leave. Not one, and none of us makes the decision as to when it happens. Absolutely. And the more we accept that we don't control anything except our response, our reaction, and understand how important it is for us to be proactive versus reactive, Right. Till we get that together, emotional intelligence, whatever you want to call it, you know, it's going to be a struggle. And I feel like I've done a lot of work to get to a place where I understand it is my being proactive and how I react to things that's going to determine, you know, my success and happiness in life. And it's not about money. I mean, hey, listen, there's a lot of billionaires out here doing a lot of shit. Crazy. It ain't about money. Unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's about prayer, meditation, and having good people in your life. I'm yeah. grateful for good people in my life. Me too. I love it. Many of them are yes. here. So I it's see. Great. And they all fine. <laughs> right? I got a cute you team. You got a cute team. Right it's not a prerequisite. <laughs> it just happened. You know, you attract what you are. You feel what I'm talking you about? <laughs> you do. And that is it. And right. that is it. Yeah. And that is it. And having people in your life that are not all connected to what you do. Right. I had to learn that. Yeah. Right? We mistake you know, having people in our life. Not, and, and I don't mean, I'm saying if, 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 if everybody's a singer up front, right? And nobody's working behind the scenes. Right. And nobody's checking the checker. It's a dangerous situation. Right. Right? And you have to have people who work as support. Yeah. Who understand that Rashawn's going to sit here and, and have the conversation with the folks. And we're going to support her and make sure she has everything that she needs to do it. I love them for it. Right. That's it. Yeah, it's great. I love you for being you. I love you for being you. Yes, thank you. You Uh, are the cool. So you are the cool. I said, Rashawn is like the coolest. You're the coolest in the world. That's what it means to say. You understand? (laughs) So you got the right name. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. I appreciate you being so open and vulnerable. Absolutely. But that's what you are. That's who you are. And that's why God continues to have you here. That's why you're here. Because you're an example. Yeah. Of what being a fighter means. Absolutely. But the fighter always got to get a little rest. And that's why you got that man over there. Yeah, you absolutely. You feel what I'm talking about? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I and I it. remind myself of that all the time. All the time. My, my, my mom, I hear her voice, baby, you got to just, just chill out. Go on, hang your I need it. you to drink that more with in that glass, too, before you leave here. Okay. You're a Detroit girl. Go ahead and sip all of it at once. <laughs> What I say in Tyler Payne, a, a lady never drinks. She sips. She sips. Hello. I love it. Well, Nikki Giver, thank you so much thank for being for here. We me. appreciate you. You are super Cheers. cool. Sora Sigma Gamma Rosa Royalty Incorporated. Hey, you're coming out. Yeah. Hey, what hey, what hey, 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 hey. Look at it. She's hey, such a meal. Out. Oh, my God. I love it. Thank you so much for being here on this amazing edition of the Cool Sora podcast mm-hmm. show with this episode with Nikki Gilbert. Can we give it up for this amazing superstar? Yeah. yeah.